Welcome, NCLEX High Yielders. This is Dr. Zishan, and I'm the host of NCLEX High Yield Podcast, where we will be giving out daily content for your exam, tips and tricks that the boards love to ask, and overall general information on how to study, what to study, and complex topics broken down for you. Whether you're a first-time test taker or even a repeat test taker, we have helped people across the globe pass their NCLEX exam, so do not give up and get motivated. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast and also visit our Instagram at NCLEX High Yield, at NCLEX High Yield, where you can DM us questions so we can answer them on the podcast. Also, check out our website, www.nclexhighyield.com, and subscribe to receive a link to our weekly free Zoom session. Free Zoom session where I drop all types of content, break down complex topics, and make them easy for you to understand every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you guys then. Take care. Just a side note, I did start making TikToks, and no, they're not of me dancing, but I do put some cool stuff on there. We're trying to do this whole thing where we do something under a minute, like pyloric stenosis under a minute, quadrant pains under a minute. So we're we're starting these things um, all free on TikTok, and all our social media handles are at NCLEX High Yield. So those are just free, free content that we put out as well, too. So if you guys got TikTok, um, maybe I'll get on there and dance one day, who knows. Anyways, I'm gonna start talking about upper GI. This is the esophagus. And this is our lower esophageal sphincter. This is our stomach. Yes, I can draw really, really well. This is our pylorus. So I wanna get into GERD and acid reflux. So what is the difference between acid reflux or GERD? GERD is gastroesophageal reflux disease. It is a disease process. Whereas acid reflux is where we have that acidity. So you cannot give medication that is used for GERD to instantaneously take care of that acidity that you got, that indigestion, that that burning sensation where you're just like, oh, it's like gnawing at your stomach, maybe even mistaken for chest pain. We do a good history and physical with them, right? Like when do you feel it? Oh, it's after eating. Oh, when I lay down or risk factors that they have, obesity, smoking, things of that nature, right? So acid reflux is acidity coming up. It's getting past the LES and it's irritating the esophagus. What do we use for acid reflux? Acid reflux is happening right now. What are we gonna give them? Tums. Give them some Tums, give them some Rolaid, give them some Pepto. That's gonna take care of it instantaneously. An antacid, that's gonna take care of acid reflux, not somebody who's got esophageal reflux disease. What do we need to know about antacids? Well, one, it can treat acid reflux. The thing that the boards will love asking about, this is one of those tips and tricks that we put out. If you see on the boards, I'm going to take my medication with an antacid, 100% of the time, that will be wrong. Do not fall for it. That is a further intervention, further teaching, clarification moment. No, dude, you're not taking antacid with your medication. Why? When pharmaceutical companies develop drugs, they take into account that your stomach pH is between one and two. So if we're going to metabolize this drug into its bioavailable form, We do not want to disrupt the pH of the stomach because that antacid is going to work right away and the efficacy of the drug that you've just taken is no longer at its full potential. Taking an antacid is going to be 100% of the time wrong. Don't choose it. It may be a further intervention one. In that case, you're going to choose it as the one that you're going to further teach. So we give it a couple of hours before we are able to take that medication again. Let that pH go back down to an acidic state and then they can take their medications. For GERD, again, GERD is something that we're gonna be looking at as a long-term process. Well, what's going on here? First, what causes these things? Let's look at some risk factors. Okay, this could be a select all that apply. Risk factors include smoking, obesity, poor nutrition or spicy foods, caffeine, alcohol. So I say this all the time, look, these are risk factors for GERD. I say this all the time, smoking cessation, lose weight, yes, chocolate too, smoking cessation, lose weight, eat healthy, decrease alcohol intake. When are you ever going to say the opposite of those four things? Smoking cessation, lose weight, eat healthy, drink less alcohol. If you see those in any situation, choose it. 
because it's never going to be wrong. It's always right. You're never going to say the opposite of those. Same thing with washing hands. If you see washing hands, no, no, it's okay. You don't need to wash your hands. Come on over and take care of me. No, no, no. Especially nowadays, we are freaking out about that. We do not want to infect anybody. So these things are risk factors for GERD. How do we treat GERD? We've got acid production. And the acid is bound with hydrogen and chloride, hydrochloric acid. Hydrogen is a proton. Protons get pumped into the stomach. So why not inhibit that pump? Proton pump inhibitors. What drugs are those? Your prazoles. Omeprazole, pantoprazole, esomeprazole. What are these? Prilosec, protonics. These are your proton pump inhibitors. This NCLEX High Yield Podcast is brought to you by Immunacy. I-M-M-U-N-A-C-Y. Immunacy.com. Immunacy is an immune system booster formulated by doctors and pharmacists. This team of MDs, PharmDs, DOs, and PhDs have put together a proprietary formula with the highest quality ingredients to keep you in your best health. All natural, gluten-free, zero sugar, vegan, no GMOs, and fully bioavailable. Stock up now to keep your immune system at its best. Immunacy is now available at immunacy.com. Check them out. And now, back to the podcast. What are we worried about with proton pump inhibitors? Long-term use of proton pump inhibitors is going to be an issue because now that we've decreased the amount of hydrogen in here, that acidic state would kill off Clostridium difficile or C. diff, a gram-negative bacteria that resides in our GI tract. That decrease in hydrogen now leads to an increase in pH because this is acidic. We get rid of the acid, we become alkalotic. Now we get growth of C. diff. Uh Uh-oh. Well, we're concerned about C. diff, right? We don't want to become septic. What do we do about C. diff? First sign is going to be metronidazole. Metronidazole is an antibiotic that is going to attack C. diff. What are we worried about metronidazole? Well, the boards could ask, oh, this person's got, you know, C. diff. What are you going to treat it with? That's like one of those freebie questions. If you know metro, you know metro. If not, you don't. Also known as flagell. But remember, the boards are not going to give you brand names. They're only going to give you generic names. So with metronidazole, what are they going to do? Well, look, if you think they're going to say this person has C. diff and what do we give them? Metronidazole? No, you're highly mistaken. They're going to give you C. diff. Then they're going to say they're being treated with metronidazole. And then they're going to say, oh, which one of the following needs further intervention? And they're going to say, oh, well, my, my urine turned dark. I should contact the HCP. No, that's expected, so dark urine. You see how this has become a third order question. The person had GERD, was on long-term PPI, and now has developed some sort of a gastrointestinal issue and was started on Metro. Which one of the following statements need further intervention? Dark urine, normal, expected. We are going to completely avoid alcohol. Further intervention moment. Well, this person's been on Metro... Um, And they said, well, I'm just going to decrease my my alcohol intake. No, 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 dude. You're not decreasing it. You're cutting it out because of a disulfan-like reaction. That will floor you. You'll be flushed. You'll be nauseous. You'll be vomiting. You'll be literally, but until it degrades itself out of your system, which takes a long time, by the way, okay, you're going to be literally sleeping in front of the toilet. That's how bad it is. Metro being the first line against C. diff. What if Metro doesn't work for C. diff? If Metro doesn't work for C. diff, well, then we give them oral vanco, vancomycin, V-A-N-C-O. It's nephrotoxic, ototoxic. Vancomycin is a very interesting drug. Well, this is PO, so we're going to give it to a person who is resistant to metronidazole that has C. diff. We're going to give them oral vancomycin. But what is vancomycin used for? Vancomycin is used for MRSA. Yeah, infections, exactly. MRSA, IV, but we give it over 60 minutes. Why? To avoid the nephrotoxicity, ototoxicity. How is that going to present? If it's ototoxic, you're going to get tinnitus, ring into the ear, maybe balance issues, whatever it is, something that indicates that this person's ear is messed up. If it's nephrotoxic, what levels am I going to check? Anything that's metabolized by the kidneys, what are we going to check? BUN creatinine. So somebody had mentioned red man syndrome. What is red man syndrome? It's cutaneous flushing. It's your skin becoming red and 
flushed. That's it. Are we freaking out about it? No. It is not an anaphylactic reaction. Slow down the infusion rate and watch this person come back to normal. No big deal. We want to keep their levels between 10 and 20 milligrams per liter. So before we give the fourth dose, we check a trough level. What is a trough level? Well, everyone's, oh, before the fourth dose, get, check the trough level. Do you know what that means? I had to understand what it meant. Because before the fourth dose, we have to make sure that we understand that this drug is metabolized by the kidney and it may not metabolize fast enough. So we have to monitor so we do not cause toxicity, that nephrotoxicity, that ototoxicity. So this is your peak. Well, what's at the bottom of a peak, a valley or a trough? We check the trough level to see how far down this vanco has dropped before we administer another dose. What if this trough level is right here? What if this trough level is right there? When it should be down here, now we administer vancomycin and bam, look at their new peak. It's toxic. It's toxic. So we have to monitor the trough level because if this trough level is not where it should be at, we are not going to give the Vanco. So I went from GERD all the way to Vanco just by relating things and understanding how things work. And this is how I want you to think eventually. I want you to think like this. When you hear something like, oh, this, 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 because I understand it, not that I memorized it. PPIs. So omeprazole, pantoprazole, esomeprazole. Well, not only do they decrease the hydrogen, but they simultaneously decrease calcium absorption. And I saw somebody post it in here. Well, what are we worried about with long-term use? Osteoporosis. What are we going to tell the, the patient to do? We can give them calcium supplements. Calcium go hand in hand with vitamin D. Calcium plus vitamin D, we can give them supplements. But what if we want to definitively know they've developed osteoporosis? There's one way to find out. Do a DEXA. Do a bone density scan. The other treatment for GERD is going to be your H2 antagonists. Your H2 antagonists are going to be your renatidine, cimetidine, famotidine. This is Zantac, Tagamet. These are the drug names, over the counter. Not really high yield, okay? PPI is high yield, GERD high yield. H2 antagonists, not really high yield, but identify them because what's gonna happen is they're going to throw these drug names into the question stem. You're gonna be like, man, I don't remember this drug but just identify it. Know that it's an H2 antagonist that's used for GERD. The only thing that I would recommend to understand that it causes gynecomastia. And what is gynecomastia? For lack of better terms, they are called man boobs. This is just GERD in and of itself, but you can see how I want your thorough understanding of how the body works, the physiology, the hydrogen, the chloride, what PPI does, what normal flora is, and how they grow when the pH becomes alkalotic. And then what are we gonna do to treat it, right? What are the side effects? What are the little words that the boards are gonna ask? Decrease alcohol or avoid alcohol? Well, you're gonna avoid alcohol, right? When smoking cessation and, and, and exercise and proper nutrition and decreasing alcohol intake, well, when are you gonna say the opposite of that? Never, never, choose it. Wash your hands, choose it. These are the types of things that we do here at NCLEX Ayud. Dude, we are finding patterns in this exam every single day. My students will tell you, they'll be like, oh my goodness, Dr. Zishan had this like epiphany. Oh my goodness, this is another pattern. Oh my goodness, another pattern. Ask my students, it's crazy. We are doing this every single day because when you've been doing the same thing over and over again, you're not adapting to the exam and the exam is forever changing. How do we know that? Well, before COVID, it was up to 265. It went to 130 and now it's at 145. Hey guys, Dr. Zishan here. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys could kindly subscribe, leave us some stars, whatever you think it's worth and leave us a review. We always want to get better for you guys and want to keep putting out this free content for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one. See you on the next podcast.